In this video, we're gonna learn about atrophic rhinitis. But first, what is rhinitis? Rhinitis is an inflammation of nose, or accurately, it is an inflammation of mucosa of the nose. And it is of two types. We have acute rhinitis and chronic rhinitis. Acute rhinitis can be bacterial, viral, or irritative type. In the viral rhinitis, it can be due to various viruses such as adenovirus, rhinovirus, influenza virus, or even measles, rubella, and chickenpox. Bacterial rhinitis is due to bacteria such as pneumococcus, staphylococcus, or streptococcus. Irritative rhinitis is due to various irritating agents such as dust, smoke, irritating gases, or even trauma. Now, next one is chronic rhinitis, which includes chronic simple rhinitis, hypertrophic rhinitis, atrophic rhinitis, rhinitis sicca, and rhinitis caseosa. But in this video, we are going to learn about atrophic rhinitis. Atrophic rhinitis, also known as ozina. And as the name suggests, there is atrophy of nasal mucosa and the turbinate bones. We know, let's suppose if this is the nasal cavity, then we know there are three nasal turbinates. We have the superior turbinate, the middle turbinate, and the inferior turbinate. So in case of atrophic rhinitis, there is atrophy of nasal mucosa along with these three turbinate bones. And since there is a reduction in the size of the turbinates, the nasal cavity becomes roomy or spacious and it is full of foul smelling crusts. Atrophic rhinitis is of two types, primary atrophic rhinitis and secondary atrophic rhinitis. First, let's talk about primary atrophic rhinitis. The etiology can be remembered as hernia. H is for hereditary factors where the disease involves more than one member of the family. E is for endocrinal disturbances and certain factors to support this theory are disease usually starts at puberty, females are more affected than males, and development of crusts sees after menopause. Hence, considering these factors, it is believed that endocrinal role also plays in causation of the atrophic rhinitis. R is for racial factors where white and yellow races are more susceptible than black. N is for nutritional deficiency where the deficiency of vitamin A, D or iron are believed to cause atrophic rhinitis. Infective agents such as Glypsella ozina, Proteus vulgaris and E. coli are also believed to cause atrophic rhinitis. But these organisms uh, are thought to be secondary invaders rather than primary causative agents. Lastly, A is for autoimmune, where the body reacts to antigens from the nasal mucosa. And this antigenicity of the nasal mucosa might be due to various external factors such as viruses, bacteria, or any other allergens. Now coming on to the pathology of the atrophic rhinitis. Ciliated columnar epithelium, which normally lines the nasal cavity, is replaced by stratified squamous epithelium. There is atrophy of the seromucinous gland, venous blood sinusoids, and nerve elements. The turbinate bones undergo resorption so that the nasal cavity becomes roomy. Now coming on to the clinical features. This disease is commonly seen in females and it starts around puberty. The foul smell due to the crusts inside the nasal cavity makes patient a social outcast. However, the patient is himself is unaware of the smell because of marked anosmia. Now, although the nasal cavity becomes widened or roomy, it is filled with crusts, hence patient complains of nasal obstruction. And when we try to remove these crusts, epistaxis might occur. Now coming on to the treatment of the primary atrophic rhinitis, we have divided it into medical treatment and surgical treatment. The medical treatment mainly aims at maintaining the nasal hy hygiene rather than uh, treating the disease. Uh, and, it, and it includes removal of crusts and associated putrefying smell. And the methods are nasal irrigation and removal of crusts. The nasal irrigation can be done with a warm normal saline or an alkali solution made of sodium bicarbonate, sodium biborate, and sodium chloride. Painting of nasal cavity with 25% glucose in glycerin also inhibits the growth of the proteolytic organisms that are responsible for foul smell. Local antibiotics uh, can also be given and the most commonly used is chemicetin anti solution which consists of chloromycetin, estradiol and vitamin D2. Now under the surgical treatment we have Young's operation. The, both the nostrils are closed completely just within the nasal vestibule by raising nasal flaps. 
and uh, they are opened after six months or later and in these cases mucosa may revert to normal and crusting reduced the next one is modified young's operation uh, to avoid the discomfort of bilateral nasal obstruction modified young's operation aims to partially close the nose nostrils it is also claimed to give the same benefit as Young's operation. So in this uh, photo, you can appreciate uh, the Young's operation, uh, operation where the nostrils are completely closed by nasal flaps. Whereas in case of uh, modified Young's operation, you can see the nostrils are partially closed. Now lastly, coming on to the secondary atrophic rhinitis, specific infections such as syphilis, lupus, leprosy and rhinoscleroma may cause destruction of the nasal structures leading to atrophic rhinitis. Atrophic rhinitis can also arise from long-standing purulent sinusitis, radiotherapic nose or excessive surgical removal of turbinates. So this much is for atrophic rhinitis. Thank you.